Welcome to Main Street Moments and Beyond. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife, Kathy. Lots going on in the world of Disney. We are social distancing, Kathy and I, while we are podcasting. And while we're podcasting only, we don't want to have our mouths too close together while we're talking and doing the show. So we're social distancing because Kathy is in a high-risk group for coronavirus. She has a heart and lung illness. So we got to be a little extra careful, but we're still in the same house and everything. We're just social distancing during the show. I don't want people to think we're social distancing all the time, like I'm moved out or something. But you know, we're we're still living together. We're just social. Di- it's tough sometimes. People got to social distance even at home. Well, there's a lot of news going on at Disney that we want to talk about, and we did watch Onward, which we got to talk about that on the show, Kathy. But I saw there's two stories I saw that involved Disney news that I wanted to bring up with you. One of them is about the Disney executives whining about their pay cuts, which we'll get to in a minute. But this other one, uh, now we've heard about the college program being suspended. That happened pretty quick when Disney shut down. But things have expanded. And here's an article that is in the news today. Disney to suspend remaining Disney internships and programs this month. That's the month of April. So it says here, Disney is suspending the rest of Disney internships and programs. The cultural representative program, which are the international workers at Epcot for the most part, they are going to be sent home. Arrivals for the Disney College program through June have been canceled. Now, get into this thing because I'm most interested about the international cultural representatives for Epcot myself. Uh, It says here, the latest decision affects those who were set to arrive now through early June for the Disney College program, the international program, culinary program, and cultural representative program. The suspension means those remaining in the cultural representative program Those are cast members from other countries who typically represent their country in Epcot will be sent home. Disney says it is working to help them return home. We will work with them on a case-by-case basis to make travel arrangements, Disney said. Those participants will continue to be paid through April 18th. Disney College Program participants and others who were set to arrive through June will have their program fees refunded. I didn't realize the college program had to pay to work at Disney. I don't know what that's about. Maybe they do. There's some fees involved. Disney also said it will invite back the cultural representatives from Epcot to complete their program at a later date, which is not given. And they are also amending eligibility requirements for its programs, including the Disney College program, uh, so that those who have already been accepted will be able to reapply even if they've already graduated. It goes on and on. Okay, so that's the basis of it. So this is what I'm curious about because we were talking last time that... Disney is taking hotel reservations for June 1st, right? And right. We, we made a reservation. We made a reservation to see you can actually make, unless they've all filled up by now, you could make a reservation for the 1st of June, which we take that to mean that Disney is opening up in some way, shape, form, or another. We don't know what will open up, how much will open up. We don't know. But we were speculating that since there's going to be so many new rules with social distancing and everything going on, that they will need the cast members back, I would hope, a couple of weeks before the parks reopen to train them on the new social distancing guidelines that we know they're going to have at Disney. But if they're returning all these international cast members to Europe and Asia, wherever else they may be, that's pretty far to send them. And then once you go off to these other countries, there's travel restrictions. You can't come back. When they send the international representatives from China, for example, or Italy, back to Italy and China, they can't come back to America because of- they might not be able to come back for a while. Yeah. So I don't know what Disney is thinking. I feel like, you know, they're sending mixed signals. I mean, it all comes down to the bottom line. It just comes down to money, basically. So maybe they, maybe it's an issue with their visas. Maybe it's costing more to have them here and keep them housed. I don't know if, if the cultural kids pay to live here. I think if you're in the college program, you pay rent a little bit every month. I think that's what I heard. Um, they don't house you for free. You still have to pay your yeah. expenses. I don't know what you the know, details like, are. but Like if you're living yeah. in a regular college. But when they return them back to their countries, a lot of yeah. them will not be able to return because of the travel restrictions. And and a lot right. of these travel restrictions are going to be around for a long time. It's going to be a long time before someone can travel 
from Italy or China into the United Maybe States. Maybe Disney is only going to open one park. That's something we haven't talked about. Maybe they're not going to open Epcot right away. Maybe they're going to open just the Magic Kingdom and have limited crowds. I, it's going to be a slow roll. It's whatever yeah. they do. They're not, I can't imagine they're just going to open everything on, on one day and, and just have it back to normal. Maybe they're only going to open one or two parks. Maybe Hollywood Studios and Magic. I don't know. That's from totally. But no one knows. No one knows. And maybe they're only going to allow hotel guests to go. Um, I don't know, but having all the cultural kids come back, you're right. I didn't think about that. They're not going to be able to bring them back. No. I don't know when the travel ban is no. going to get lifted. Yeah. I can't imagine it getting lifted anytime soon. Maybe you know, and a lot of the fun when you go to the, and Ratatouille is supposed to be opening up. They're going to send the kids back to France and they may not be able to fly back. You know, a lot of the fun of going to Epcot is seeing all the people from the different countries. Sure. And talking to them. And yeah. It's Every, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Places, yeah, so, and I don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, I I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, maybe they'll hire, maybe they'll hire like Americans who are immigrants from those countries and have already been. I don't know, but it seems to be not good. That Epcot would not be the same. And you know, when the parks do reopen, there's a lot going on because the um, uh-huh. Ratatouille is going to be opening soon, and yeah. I guess the space restaurant will be open for takeout like every other restaurant. Well, are they still working on Ratatouille? Now, I read an article that the only construction going on at Disney right now is like third party construction that's that's like uh-huh. not affiliated with Disney directly. It's like a third party construction company that's doing it. So I don't know if they're even working on Ratatouille right now. I mean, they that might be postponed. Yeah. Too. I'm getting a lot of mixed messages on construction. I'm hearing conflicting reports. Yeah, yeah. You know? there's a lot of mixed messages. So we really, everything. we really don't know. <laughs> but, but sending those international representatives back to cl- places that they may not be able to ever return from. I mean, you Plus can't even can't travel from. You can't even travel from Canada to the United States right now. They and they canceled the college program yeah. for the fall. Um, the kids were supposed to come in June, I yeah. guess, for orientation or whatever and then start for their fall term, they cancel that too. So I'm wondering yeah. if they, what they're going to do is I think what I'm guessing is the kids that were in the college program now where it got cut short, they're going to extend that and let them do the next semester. I, I guess. Who knows if there's even going to be college. Push but... everything back. It, it's yeah. a big mess. You know, this Disney's a big company. It and is a mess. It's a lot of logistics. It's a lot to move around. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. And, you know, and the executives that are unhappy of giving up their salary, they're probably working more than ever right now. Well, you know, I'll tell you what this tells. This is what it tells me. Okay, then this just again, none of us know anything because Disney isn't really telling us anything. We hear little pieces and then we have to speculate. So here's what I think is going on so far as the workforce at Walt Disney World here in Florida. They are going to open up. We don't know how much, but whatever they do. But even if they opened up every park and everything, when they, you know, let's just say they open up everything, they're going to have drastically reduced capacity sizes because, I would think you so. know, so maybe Disney doesn't need all these other workers. Maybe they're talking about really trimming down their workforce because they don't need as many workers if they're going to have smaller capacity at the park to have social distancing guidelines in place of some sort. Well, I know they're, they've stopped paying, they're going to stop paying everybody on April 18th. Mm -hmm. And these kids are going to be sent home and furloughed basically like all the other employees on April 19th. So there's going to be a six week gap. But like you said, if they reduce crowd size for a few months, they might not bring back all those employees. They might only need half the employees there. And so they're restructuring everything. I think they're really waiting on what the government decides to do. They're going to have, you know, because there might be certain restrictions put in place, which I'm guessing, and they're going to have to adhere to those restrictions um, but nobody knows what's happening. We haven't heard anything. Well, yeah, we were we were talking or... about this on the last show. I'm I'm following. So you know, we're, we live in Florida, and what goes on in Florida so far as COVID nineteen coronavirus and things being shut down and things not being shut down. I'm following Disney a lot because Disney is the number one tourist destination in in, in America and the world, but the number one tourist destination in the world. So, so that means it's really huge in Florida. And the Disney company is very well connected to the government in Florida. So the 
the state government in Florida, they're not making any moves without informing Disney because they're such a large employer, which probably has a lot of influence over members of the government. So So I've been watching Disney to kind of get an idea on when Florida is going to open up. And then June 1st, they plan on opening up in some way, shape or form June 1st because they're taking the hotel reservations. That's right. But, you know, and, you know, another thing we were talking about. And we have we've been speculating on how will the queues for the different attractions work with social distancing. And, you know, I was at the bank today where I actually went inside the bank lobby and it was Bank of America. And they had very fancy printed stickers on the floor telling you where to stand. And they were they had logos. There was a lot of artwork went into it. Very expensive that, I'm, oh, yeah. you know, so when they ha- and they're six feet apart and actually when i was in line at the bank it wasn't that bad it wasn't as far apart as i was thinking it would be because the bank lines go up and down and and, and things like this so i kind of think when they bring social distancing guidelines into the queues at disney which they're going to have to do because that's the new normal it's not going to be as bad as you think as most people might might think you know i don't know i wonder how it's gonna work when you have kids and oh. like um you know kids little kids aren't gonna want to stand six feet apart from their parents well they you can't know, yeah the be, kids don't have to do it you don't have to that's gonna be interesting how they how they work yeah. that and you know in a lot of these rides like when you go in the haunted mansion and it's all dark in there it's yeah. so dark in there when you when you go into the building I don't know how they're going to do that. They're going to have to. Is it one person said, per doom buggy now? And, 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 exactly. you know, and on is Space that Mountain. Do it? That, that's, that's a good point. And on you Space Mountain, there's, that, are there going to be three people on, on each car on right. Space Mountain now? That's right. You have, you have cars and rides that hold at least two people. Are there yeah. any rides that hold just one person? I don't think um, so. The new Tron ride. Okay, that's the, the Tron only cycle. somebody behind you that can yeah. hop on your neck. I mean, they got to... Oh, my so goodness. So they're going to have to do that. You <laughs> might have to go into, um, like you said, go into Haunted Mansion and go on the ride by yourself. So this is going to have a lot to do Dude. with crowd control. Um, and uh, I'm sure they're... I'm issues. sure they I'm are sure, working on it. They probably have... I don't... I mean... You know, they've never had to deal with anything like nobody has. They've never had to deal with anything like this. And Disney, the crowds are a huge factor. Yeah. And like you said, what about when you get on a ride? And what about, you know, so it's going to be very, I just can't imagine they're going to allow the number of people that they normally do because they can't control that kind of crowd. And yeah. It's too much of a risk. Um, so I think they're going to. You know, my guess is they're going to open the parks to hotel guests only or and or annual pass holders. I don't think they're going to. No, not annual pass everybody. holders, because we, we I don't think they. No, nah, I think it, I think hotel guests may be in the beginning. We'll in find out soon enough. Now, there's this other story. Some of the Disney executives are whining about their uh. salaries. And I'm sure most of you probably heard that Disney executives have taken pay cuts during this tough time. Bob Iger has given up his entire salary. And the guy that replaced Bob Iger, I've forgotten his name, he's taking a pay cut. But, you know, these guys like Iger and the, and the guy that replaced him, they get so many stock options and bonuses. They get that money back so many different ways. But I read this article. It says here, Disney executives are unhappy about slash salaries. Listen to this. As the Walt Disney Company attempts to stop the bleeding from the coronavirus pandemic, a contingent of executives are reportedly pushing back against pay cuts. Disney has seen its stock plummet 16% over the last month as COVID-19 has sapped Hollywood of its money-making vigor. In response, the Magic Kingdom is temporarily amending company contracts to reduce salaries by 20 to 30%, and that is not sitting well with most. Now, keep in mind, the parks are closed, right? A standard Disney VP earns between one hundred fifty and $200,000 in annual base pay. So, wow. So, I, I, you know. That's it, a lot of money. Yeah. So, they're upset because they're making 200000 a year and they have to go down to one hundred sixty. Well, that's base pay. That doesn't include their bonuses and stocks. While it now that's just the um, that's just the standard VP. The next up is an executive vice president. An executive vi- vice president at Disney can earn upwards of seven hundred thousand dollars per year. Oh de- my lord! Yeah, depending on their apart uh, their department, according to the Hollywood Reporter. Under this new effort, earnings are being reduced to weather the financial storm. However, the amended contracts presented to the affected executives do not include an end date, which is eliciting backlash. 
from the executives. Oh, this is what they're upset about because they're upset that they're going to agree to this pay cut and it could be going on for three to four years. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Or longer. Forever, well, yeah. you know, companies are going to have, and, and I was talking about this in our Facebook group on uh, Main Street Moments, companies are going to have to recoup these losses. And where do you think they're going to go to recoup this? They can cut these salaries. It helps, them, but that's a drop in the bucket. They're going to, I mean, how many executives do they have worldwide? I'm sure. Oh, more than hundred, you think. Yeah. Maybe a few thousand, but cutting their salary by 20%, it'll help, but they're losing. Millions it's symbolic. It's it, a million. It's a PR gonna, thing. Believe me, we are going to be recouping a lot of this cost. We're oh, yeah. We're going to see it, maybe not right away, but we're going to see another increase in passes, another increase in tickets, yep. another parking. increase in hotels. Parking's going to go up. Everything, parking. Yep. We're going to see a lot of that to recoup a lot of this loss that's been going on. Well, li listen we're to this, Kathy. It says here, it, it says here, Bob Iger has already announced that we, he will forego his entire salary. The new CEO, Bob Chappick, will reduce his base salary by 50%. However, this only applies to their base salaries. Now, Iger gave right. up his salary, right? Which was $3 million. But his take-home last year wasn't $3 million, $44.5 million in total compensation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and was on pace uh, potentially for more than $400 million over the next four. Chappick carries an annual targeted bonus of $7.5 mil. And a long-term deal worth upwards of fifteen million. So, so you're right; these, these cuts are just symbolic. Well, yeah, but here's the with the lower level executives that make like they're a, not going to do much. Not going to do much. Well, the lower level executives that make like one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand a year. It this is a it says here this is voluntary. Okay, for them to okay. take the pay cuts, but executives that do not sign the new agreement could sacrifice long-term advancement at the company. Oh but, sure. Sacrifice potential bonuses as well so you know they're kind of it's voluntary but it's not really voluntary well they're gonna have to do it because because if you don't they're they might make you pay for that decision down the road well yeah be like you're not you're not a team player you know and that's the way it goes you know and i don't see anything wrong with everybody sacrificing i mean there's people losing their jobs that make 15 10 15 bucks an hour that are really struggling. So I don't feel sorry for any of these people that are making six figures having to take a little cut in their, no. in their income. You know I mean? I, they're not going to get any sympathy out of me when you have people that come April 18th, they're going to lose their paycheck completely for probably six weeks, maybe longer because, you know, Disney opens at half capacity or whatever. They're not going to bring back all those employees. It's probably going to be an issue about seniority. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens, you know, because my sister, she's a flight attendant and, she said they've, you know, cut a lot because they're not yeah. flying internationally and all this stuff. And, and the flights are really empty. And she's worried about her job, but she has she has 25 years in the company. So she's like, I'm hoping my seniority helps me out a little bit because usually that's what happens. The yeah. newer people um, are the ones that get cut loose. But I can't imagine them bringing back every single employee i don't think things are going to get back to normal for a year until there's a vaccine until i think that's when things will calm down yeah but until then i think all businesses are going to open with strict regulations um making accommodations and i'm sure that they you know are working on it and talking about this constantly trying to figure out but things change so much all the time you know yeah every day it seems yeah. something it's well, changing. Disney, you know. you know, Disney, I do believe is the largest employer in Florida. And I think so. it is, yeah, I think you're right. You know, it is going to open up. But, you know, here's the thing. Now, this is interesting because the college program kids, the the and these other programs like the international, those uh -huh. aren't Florida residents for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's some that are like in a college program that come from Florida schools, but most they're are from all over. Though. Yeah, most they're from all over. So the priority would probably be to bringing back to work uh, the Florida residents and the adults, right, that are out in the workforce already because they want to get people back to work. It seems to me that they don't need as many employees and a huge chunk of their employees are these different, these different programs. That looks to be what's getting slashed. Oh, now over the weekend, you and I watched Onward on uh -huh. Disney Plus, which is one of these, I don't know if it's controversial, but it's one of those movies that everybody loves or hates. And we watched it, and I and I got to tell you, I was, uh, I was, I, I wouldn't say I was disappointed because my expectations were so low for Onward, but I really didn't care for it that much at all. No, I didn't like, I didn't like either. And um, 
I liked Big Hero 6 much better. And it's kind of the same. Yeah. In some similarity, not really, but the theming of. It's a lot like Big Hero 6. Lo- losing a loved one. And then the ending, you have a Big Hero 6, like his brother's spirit is or whatever is in the machine. And so it's not really the same, but kind of. It's a, a similar way, thing. It's a similar. Like, similar theming, well, I guess. Well, I'm not going to give too many. Um, you know, I don't want to give too many spoilers, for- but the. There's a there's a final scene that to me I felt a little deja vu to the final scene in Big Hero Six. There's some similar theming with the brother relationship, and I thought Big yeah. Hero Six did it way better. It's a far better movie. I didn't like it at all. But I didn't like Frozen Two either. I didn't get it. I'm like in every yeah. a lot of people loved it. They thought I was crazy. Yeah. Frozen Two again is one of those movies people seem to love it or hate it. I didn't like either. I'm gonna watch Frozen Two again. Yeah. But onward, I did not like it all. I thought it was a complete waste of time. I didn't connect with the characters. I didn't like the story. I thought yeah. that the father being like half a body was totally weird and yeah, it was and, bizarre. And, I just didn't like it. They, at all. Onward it does have the beginnings of something good, and Onward. This good is not. Idea. This isn't a spoiler, but this is just a general background of it. Onward takes place in a world that's about our era, our timeline, but it takes place in a world where there used to be wizards and warlocks and magic and all this stuff, and be. And because of inventions, like the electric light bulb they show and things like this, magic has been lost and forgotten. And there's no need, there's no need for There's it, no need basically. for magic. And they had so, wizardry so like in, the wizards yeah. were like the wizards in Harry Potter. But in the modern time, magic is gone because there's no need to it due to all the modern inventions like cars and light bulbs and right. other things. And a good idea. It, yeah, and it is it is a good idea. It's like a new world that they've never shown before. But what they did with it was so I thought strange. It was there was very little character development, and I it was not even a, emotional like a lot of movies. And I will tell you, I do feel like it is very much almost almost like a ripoff of Big Hero Six in so many ways. Including the final, there's a there's a battle scene at the end. It's almost just I don't know. I had this deja vu of Big Hero Six, Kathy. It just seemed seemed kind of to be a ripoff of Big Hero Six in some ways to me. The brother in Big Hero Six, the father in this one. I I don't know. I think it, yeah, it was the father was gone and yeah, you know. But but that's not an uncommon theme in Disney movies. There's a lot of themes where. The, yeah, the, you know, there's princesses that are orphaned or have a yeah. dead parent or whatever. So yeah. that's a common theme for some reason in Disney movies where there's a parent missing or the parents are gone. Or, yeah. But I, I didn't, you know, there's people I put in the Facebook group that love the movie. They cried at the end. I didn't wow. feel any emotional connection to this at all. I didn't like it. I didn't get it. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the animation. I don't know. I just didn't like it. I'm never going to see this one again. Big Hero 6, I loved. I've seen it three yeah. times. I think it's a great movie. Yeah, that's it's a got great a great movie. story. And I really got drawn into that movie. This movie just felt like um, it was, and it had, you know, I read the budget was a hundred million dollars. That's hard to imagine. And that's what it made worldwide. It it barely broke budget. They thought it was going to make 500 million. Now I wonder if that's because it wasn't in the theaters very long. And then all this happened and they had to put it right at Disney plus. Yeah. Maybe they would have made another 50 million, but I remember when it came out, I was reading a lot of people didn't like it. Um, people love it or hate it. It's one of those things. That there's nobody I've seen that's like in between, but I, I didn't like it. You know, at I was all. at the drive through at, Sp- at Starbucks with our daughter last week. I think it was last week. It was Friday. I was at the drive through at Starbucks on Friday, and the, the, uh, the barista was talking to me. I get my coffee wasn't ready, so she was just doing small talk. She's like, oh, Onward's on Disney Plus today. And I was like, yeah, I've heard mixed things about it. And she's like, oh, I love Onward. It's so good. I don't know why people don't like it. It's not that it's the worst movie ever made, but it's just not that good. There's very The character development's awful. It's a story that I've seen a whole bunch of times before. And I would like to see more of this world where there used to be magic and it's gone yeah, now. I'd like to see idea, that. And I don't think they developed it right. I think it was a really good idea where magic is obsolete because of technology. I thought that was different. That's clever. Um, but Chris Pratt does the older brother. His character is very annoying. He's not yeah. likable to me. The little brother's yeah. annoying and whiny. And I just didn't like the characters. I didn't feel that connection. Like Big Hero 6 was so cool. The animation, the story. And I really felt, you know, like I was like tearing up at the end. Yeah, like, and the wow, father and like the father movie. and Onward 
this is no secret. I think people have seen this. It's on the behind the scenes on Disney Plus. You know, that they, they it's about using magic to bring their their late father back to life for a yeah. day, and through a mishap, he only gets half his body, the waist down. So he can't yeah, hear, he no. can't talk, he can't communicate. And it's just them, they put a leash on the father and they drag around his lower body through the whole movie. It's it's so strange. And I, I imagine when the... It was weird. Yeah, when the creators of this got together, on Disney Plus, they have this new show where they do the behind the scenes of things. We watched it on Onward. Um, this week, it's on the Mulan. It's a new show on Disney. I can't remember what the show's called. Behind the Magic or something. I don't know what it's called. Something like that. And they interviewed the producers and the people that worked on the movie. And they just thought this, you know, they were so excited about their idea. And I watched the movie and it's like, Ugh, onward. I don't know. And See, then yeah. they had the, one of the characters was like the lion from Rudolph, the flying lion. And I thought, well, that's yeah. not very original. They have yeah. a lion who flies like from the Rudolph. But, you know, I would really like to see... Disney Plus needs more original content, for sure. They're not keeping up with other streaming services as far as original yeah. content goes, which is yeah. very disappointing. They have Kenobi coming, which I can't wait. The Mandalorian is coming, and now, who knows, production could be held up. So Mandalorian might not be coming out till December. I mean, you know, all these or later, who knows? movies and things are not filming right now. But I really would like to see Disney Plus have more original the tv shows they've had they're really geared well i'm really kids. excited about mandalorian season two because yeah. they're going to have ahsoka tano ahsoka from tano, Clo yeah. clone wars they're going to have one of the characters from uh star wars rebels yes. that cartoon it's gonna be amazing so you know and i i'm really looking forward to the second season of mandalorian they should have done the whole movie series on ahsoka tano instead of these new I characters agree. no one cares about i would love to see disney kind of go back to their roots not not like from the 30s, but no. hmm. I would love to see them redo some of these classic stories like Swiss Family Robinson. I, you know, they're redoing that that place at Disney. They're refurbishing it or something. Yeah. I would love to see a movie, a reboot of that movie, because that's a great movie. The one that came out in the, the 1960 60s. version. It's yeah. a great movie and it's a great story. And they have that place there at the park. I would love to see them reboot some of those old classic, like in the Jules Verne and those old classic stories yeah. for kids to kind of kids to get excited about those stories again, instead of rehashing these same old storylines from cartoons, let's rehash some of the old stuff that that's based on classic. You, you don't mind them stories. rehashing. You just want them to rehash stuff. They haven't rehashed yet. Well, <laughs> It's not that. It's just this this movie, like Onward. It just seems like yeah, taking was... advantage of the audience in a way. Like it's just kind of done on the on the cheap, or done. One hundred million is not cheap, but like nothing or nothing terribly original. So if they're gonna redo stuff, then take some of these classic books that haven't been done since the '60s. You know, they did um, the uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth and all these old classic books that they took and put them into well they did the journey to the center of the earth with brandon frazier a while back a few years ago and that oh, was pretty that's good. good that was good that's, that, that was, was good. very good we do more of those remember that the and they good. did the uh they did the escape uh from uh escape to witch mountain with the rock also the rock. that was yeah. good so those so some good. of these are good yeah yeah i'd like to see more of that but i would like to see more original shows on Disney Plus that aren't just geared just for little kids. I mean, well, there are some shows you know, the thing about Disney Plus, I love it, and I and we do watch it. But yeah, I do too. Um, I love it. You know, I did not prior to Disney Plus. I did not really watch a lot of the Disney cartoons, even when our daughter was little. I, I when I was young and a kid, I didn't really like cartoons as a kid. I guess I was weird, and I have watched more Disney cartoons since we have had Disney Plus, and we had it on day one. Than I think I've watched in my whole life combined, and like, like I, and a lot of these, I saw uh, the Lion King for the first time a couple weeks ago. Yeah, which I, I was I never saw that. What else did you know, I? Aladdin, good. I recently Disney. saw for the first time. You know, I never saw Aladdin. A lot of movies I hadn't really seen. Really good on mm. Disney Plus, which you should watch. And I watched two yesterday. Are the Disney Nature specials are excellent. I saw the one yeah. on the dolphins and the one on the on the the African yeah. cats. And those are very well done. Yeah. Those I highly recommend. I'm going to watch all of those. Those I like. I just would like to see some more original shows that are geared maybe towards older audiences like The Mandalorian type, Kenobi, more like that. Um, hopefully they'll start coming out with some more. It seems like Netflix and Amazon have so much original content constantly cranking yeah. it out. 
It just seems yeah. like they're ahead of Disney. Well, what they do, what they do is what what the other streaming services do is if there's someone working on something and producing something somewhere else, they'll license it and then call it like a Netflix production. They don't actually do the production all the time. So Disney can do that. Yeah, they buy the rights <laughs> to things. Yeah, exactly. You no, know, they yeah. can do that, but it's it's limited because like Netflix, and I really thought Netflix was going to be in trouble. They're not. They're actually doing really well when Disney Plus came up because Netflix is not limited like Disney Plus is. Disney Plus cannot do like true crime Well, shows. you know what though? They can't do like scary, gory, Di- and it, Netflix can do anything. Yeah, they they're a little more shows. limited. They, yeah. they have more freedom in that yeah. regard where they can do true crime, which is well, really I disagree right with now. you. You know, the Netflix, I've been pretty tired of Netflix because the selection on Netflix, they have a huge selection, but I'm not as happy with it as I used to be. But, you know, coronavirus has so many people at home that aren't normally yeah. home that all the streaming services are booming. But it does seem it does seem sometimes I, I'll have a hard time finding something like last night, just out of the blue. We, we were watching on uh, Disney Plus right before bed the uh, the Great Mouse Detective. Which was really cute. It's very good. Yeah, it's very good. I've never good. seen that movie. Mm-mm. I've never seen it either, and it is really, really good. Yeah, I think that would make a really cute TV show because you got the mouse. It's so funny because we were watching the beginning, and you said, this mouse should live in Sherlock Holmes' house, and then you find out he does. Yeah, exactly. Which is so clever. And he's like a little detective that solves all these crimes. I think that would make a really yeah. I like I like that movie a lot. It's really good. I I, I thought that was adorable. So, but but we you fell asleep in the middle. I fell asleep in the middle. I watched (laughs) that. I watched the other half tonight. I watched the other half tonight. Well, I I like those old school cartoons. It was so so good. I fell asleep in the middle. Yeah. And you know, I like the live action remakes of the princesses. A lot of people don't like those. I love them. Like I thought sleep. I thought Beauty and the Beast was excellent. Yeah, I love good. Cinderella. Cinderella was Aladdin. very good. And and they're doing one now for Rapunzel, which is going to be good. So I like those things. I don't mind them rebooting stuff. I just... Oh, I'm like looking forward to Mulan. Stuff. You know, I saw yeah. Mulan for the first time about a month ago. I had not seen any of these movies. And <laughs> I've been watching them since we got Disney+. Plus, and Mulan looks good. Most everyone I've watched, I've liked. The only things on Disney+, Plus that are newer, that I haven't liked, is Onward... Which I will never watch again. And um, oh, what is the other one that with the Frozen girl? Frozen two. Now Frozen two, and then one more, the girl in Hawaii. I didn't care for Moana. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you don't. Everybody like loves that. I didn't care That's for it at all. Movie. That's yeah. a great movie. The yeah. music's great. That's one of my favorite movies. But everything else, but, I've loved. I've loved everything. Yeah, I would like to see more behind the scenes, and I really wish they would bring back. I've said this before: the Wonderful World of Disney with Walt Disney. I don't know. Why they must they have don't ten have million that episodes there. of that that they could put up. There. I mean, it was on every week. It was even they brought it back in the eighties with Michael Eisner. But bring back the old school ones with Disney. That would be so awesome to have them because there's really not enough Walt Disney in regards to Disney. There's just not. I mean, he needs to be more present. Bring those back. And I love the Imagineering story. I want more of that. That was like the Imagineering was like the story was the best. Ever. Yeah, I think Amazing. the ima- the Imagineering story was the best thing they've ever done. And I think they will bring it yeah. back they when there's to. when there's new things. You know, when these new I think they'll bring back the Imagineering story when new things open, like when Tron opens or. Something opens Maybe. in Japan, you know, or they'll they'll bring it back then with like a special. But the Imagineers on Disney Plus was just absolutely amazing. I would like to see, you know, if you go to YouTube, there's this channel called Martin's Vids. Oh, yeah, it's a great channel on YouTube. It's a great channel. And I don't know where he gets his footage. But he has all these old home videos and movies of all the old rides and Epcot when it was first open. And I would love to see the Imagineering story do specials or whatever, a new show that does specials on the way Disney used to be and like real vintage stuff and how things change and evolve. There's just so much they can do. I don't feel they're doing enough production wise as far as that goes. I really don't think they're doing enough. I mean, maybe that's just me, but every time I go and check it every week, I don't see that many new things. And I, I would really, I would really like to see more stuff on that. If Disney plus what, what, one of the things I would like to see on Disney plus is for them to, and I know this will be controversial with some people because some people, you know, but I, I wish that they would like hire Justin Scard, for example, and let him vlog for Disney Plus. You know, I was wondering if Disney, Disney's very 
vlogger friendly. Yes. And hopefully that'll mm-hmm. never change. It's very vlogger friendly. Um, they definitely use the popularity of the Disney vloggers. And I think Disney vloggers have really helped. It's free advertising. I mean, yeah, we started going to the parks again and bought annual passes because we watched Justin Scarred. I mean, really, yeah. that's kind of how we started getting it. I was wondering, you know, we've talked about this, if Disney is ever going to hire vloggers of their own to do like a weekly. Well, yeah, well I, I think they, they are. Like, they I, and I think they are. And I'll tell you why. They have like an official well, vlogger. Well, w- part of the update, I think they are. And the reason I say that is I've seen yeah. them do it kind of already, but at Epcot, at that um, part of the new updated Epcot, that thing that's that part, I don't know what it's called, that part that's elevated that in the concept, there's a television studio up there. That'd be amazing. And yeah, and and I've seen a couple things. They did this with Galaxy's Edge where they had like some Disney people that are trying to look like hipster vloggers that they put on their YouTube channel. And it always looks like actors and it always looks too corporate. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't look, like vlogging it doesn't look real it looks you know you know what i'm talking about it it doesn't have that well, very polished so it would definitely have like a more polished look to it but i would love to see disney since they're having that news area up at epcot i would love to see them do like a weekly news show you know every week well of, there's right, well one thing about disney disney news i think that'd be amazing disney okay two things about disney that, you know, and I, this first thing I'll tell you, I, I learned from Rob Plays. If, if you guys don't know who Rob Plays is, he's got one of the most incredible YouTube Disney channels out there. He doesn't really vlog at Disney, but he does he does uh, things from a historical perspective. Rob Plays, I'm sure most people know who Rob Plays is. He's amazing. I met him at the opening of Galaxy's Edge here in, in Florida, but he um, he talked about the opening of, of Epcot. And this this plays into the vloggers and what Disney did to get a lot of publicity. Back in 1982, when Epcot Center opened, satellite television was new, where where television stations could report via satellite from anywhere in the world. That was new. And they brought in a satellite truck and invited all these local news crews from all over America to come there and have access to the satellite truck that Disney rented so they could do reports, even though they were from Indiana, they could do reports from Epcot Center's opening. I know that sounds crazy, but that, that was a big deal back then. And they got millions upon millions of dollars in free publicity with with these local stations flying people in to cover the opening of Epcot because they had access to for free to the satellite hookup. Vlogging is a very similar thing to Disney. They get millions upon millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in free publicity from vloggers and Instagrammers and TikTokers. And I don't think that's going to end because it's too much free publicity for him. No, I don't think it's going to end. I just wonder if they would ever hire a vlogger of their own to do like a weekly series. I would love to see them do, like I said, a weekly news series, like from that Epcot studio, like yeah. a live newscast, like overlooking the park and then maybe have rogue reporters going out and showing well the problem names. with that is once once you're on the payroll it's like that episode of iCarly you guys watch iCarly when uh, iCarly got picked up by by a television network and then they changed the whole show and it wasn't I, it was iCarly in name only remember that they had like the I don't think they hire a, I don't think they would hire a vlogger I think they'd hire their own paid hire actors to do it it I won't be the same would that wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't care for that it wouldn't be the same no but 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 if they hired a vlogger I don't think they would hire a regular person Disney vlogger they're going to hire an actor to do it cuz Disney does everything yeah. Very polished, very top shelf. I'm not saying bloggers aren't top shelf, but we're regular people. They would hire an actor who would do it and have complete creative control. Yes. That's how that would work. That's correct. Um, the bloggers yeah. are very useful to Disney. And it's. I think they treat them really well if you have a certain level. Now, I contacted them and they told me that when you reach, I think they said 30,000 subs is when they start working with you. Yeah, so you guys got to subscribe. We're, we're quite a ways away from that. <laughs> That's when you start getting yeah. media passes and things like that. <laughs> can we you get know, together with like, can we get together with like 25 other vloggers and put our subs together and get a pass? I yeah, don't know. Exactly. And, and, or on Instagram, that's when they start paying attention to certain influencers. And you, and, and I can see that because when Michael K hit like 30,000 or 35, then when he was moved out to Florida, he was around 35,000. And then he started getting invited to media events yeah. and things like that. But you know, not, it's interesting because not all vloggers do get invited to media 
media events that do have over 30,000. So I wonder if Disney's a little particular in who they bring Well, some on, don't want it. Like I, I saw... Or, um, or people uh, just don't want to do it. Well, last week, Adam the Woo did a vlog, and he was talking about this, and he says that he does not want media passes. He says the only media passes he takes are for Halloween um, haunted houses because you can't yeah. film in haunted houses when they're open, so he'll take a media pass. But he thinks that media passes interfere with the authenticity of his vlogs. I agree. And that that's something we could talk about on another episode. I totally yeah. agree with you. I mean, I, but, you know, if we ever got to that point where we were getting offered media stuff, I wouldn't turn it down. Are you kidding me? But I do think. No, I've had media. I've had media passes through my other job and, you know, through my other other things in my life, you know, and what, you know, like I had. Uh, I had a uh, media event with um, with something where I got an entire VIP tour of Epcot. I had a VIP guide with some actors, and it was a really cool thing. I've done that, and and I've had some other media things through my radio career that they used to do a lot for radio, and they still do. But uh, I had, you know, I I did a lot of stuff with radio days and things at Disney years ago. But whenever you do things like I remember a friend of mine from a radio station got to broadcast live from Walt Disney World once and this was crazy this was many many years ago he broadcast live from disney world from a radio studio at walt disney world and it was the, he had he had someone from disney in the studio like overseeing him and yeah. making and, and he he made a joke and during the break they said do not do that ever again or you will never be in, i mean it was like uh you know, having well, guess what I'm, what I'm thinking. <laughs> so that, if that happened to a vlogger, that wouldn't be fun. Right. We could talk about it on another show, but when you are a vlogger and you get media passes to Disney, you're kind of, you know, you want to take the passes because it's a lot of cool perks and you get to go to things early and look at the merchandise and it's great for your vlog. But you're not going to say anything negative because Disney's not going to invite you You don't want to be cut off. And Me, you don't want to be cut you know off, what, though? So it kind of makes the makes the content not as I don't want to say not as honest, but maybe yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to be definitely not saying a lot of negative things, and maybe because you're afraid of getting knocked off the, the list. Well, exactly. There's there's two types of media passes that people get, a couple different kinds. Okay, one I like and one I don't. There is the pass that a lot of people get where Disney will comp them to go to um, an event like uh, the Not So Scary Halloween, for example. Like you'll watch Tim Tracker and others and they'll say, well, Disney invited us to this event. And they'll cover the event and it's like a normal vlog and those are cool. The, or, the, or there'll be the after hours event and, and somebody will have media passes. That's cool. But there's another type of media pass when people do this, I don't care for, Okay. Before the festivals, they'll have a media pass, and a few days before a festival begins, they'll go and they'll be like in a tent or a building that's not in the park, outside the park, but on Disney property, and they'll be around and they'll get to see all the dishes and merchandise up in this tent or in this warehouse or in this room, and I don't really care for that, and sometimes, like they did an event like this right before one of the festivals at Epcot, and they had some representatives they could interview that were talking about the new movies, right? The new French movie, the new Canadian movie, and the new, um, the one over in the land. And it was strange and awkward to see some of the vloggers like trying to interview people from the, it just didn't, I didn't, I don't care for those. I don't care for those kind of, I like the so vlogs. Do you think it's like, do you think it's like too set up? Um, it, I like it when they're, and I don't love all these vloggers. Don't, don't misunderstand me. It's no knock against them. I would take the, I would probably go too. But I like the vlogs when they're in the parks and they're just doing it. You know, even if they get, it's okay if they get comped by Disney to go to the Christmas party or the Halloween party or something. That's cool. And I enjoy it. But I don't, I don't like it when they go to those things in the tent and all the chefs are there showing them the dishes that are going to be like at the. the no, nah, the pre, I don't like those. I don't like those. No. I don't mind it. I like to see the merch ahead of time, but I'm big into the merch and I, I don't mind. I like seeing that what's coming and, and that kind of stuff. So that I don't mind that at all. And trying the different foods, that doesn't bother me. You know, but. sometimes it was weird. Like we were watching, I, I guess it must have been before the Garden Festival. I can't remember which one it was, but I was watching uh, Big Fat Panda, who I, I love Big Fat Panda. Everyone loves Big Fat Panda. 
but he was showing merchandise that was like in a kitchen at one, at, at, at one of the Disney parks. And they had like a, a display of all the festival merchandise and it was like in a kitchen. It was strange. You know, I, if they if they did the yeah. preview in the park, I'd be like, oh, OK. And that's just me. Yeah, so maybe it's not the preview that bothers you. It's more where they have the location. Yeah, it seems it's it's weird. Like instead of having it in the store. Yeah. Yeah, set up in the store on a display and have everybody come the night before to do or the day before or whatever. And they, you know, but I guess they can't do that because then people are going to want to buy the stuff. Yeah, I don't and know. yeah, and I'll tell you one other one that um, now this may be controversial too. God forbid we don't want to be controversial. No, um, I will never go to Sea World. I have a, I have a moral objection to the entire concept of Sea World. I've been to SeaWorld when I was a kid. My parents took me. I've never been to SeaWorld as an adult. And I will never go to SeaWorld. I just will never go to SeaWorld. Well, I, I will go where they have animals performing, wild animals performing in a show. I will not patronize any business that does that. I'm a little uncomfortable with Animal mm -hmm. Kingdom. Um, and that's part of the reason I don't go very much. I don't like wild animals in captivity at all. Yeah. But – um. You know, Animal Kingdom is a little better. At least they don't make them perform like they're in a circus. And they're in these I, tanks. I don't care for the whole concept yeah. of SeaWorld. I mean, a big whale should yeah. not be living in a tiny tank. It's just it's just not normal. It's not natural. It's not right. I mean, you, I watched this Disney special on the dolphins. And it's amazing. And they have this huge ocean to swim in. And that is what they're meant to do. They're meant to do that. Yeah. Um, having the animals at Animal Kingdom, to me, is a little different because a lot of the animals – when you watch the African thing, the only reason they migrate is for food sources. Yeah. Um, but other than that, if they had, didn't have to worry about the food or, or, or anything like that, they would pretty much yeah. stay put. Um, and they're in a habitat that's similar to what they know and yeah. they are provided food, but I don't like parks that have animals perform. No, no, that's just not for me. No. I, I don't, yeah, I don't and like I don't them. like, I don't like, I don't like all these sea creatures in tanks. And I know a lot of no. people go to SeaWorld and people love SeaWorld. No. They love the no, rides. I'll never go there. I will no, never. Ne I wouldn't go to SeaWorld for free. No. No, they, they gave me free. I wouldn't go. They've got, you know, they've got that Sesame Street thing over there. And I might be interested in seeing that, but I'll never, I'll never see it. Except they're trying I'll never really see hard. It. I mean, they're, they're getting a lot of vloggers to go there and they're doing some food festivals of their own. Dolly Parton's doing a food festival at her park now. Food festivals are yeah, becoming. Yeah, pretty big. A big thing um you know we'll see you know i wonder if disney is going to have their festivals this fall because that brings a lot of crowds um they might not have them the the uh food and wine comes in the fall and then the christmas i wonder if they're even going to have those because they say this virus could come back in the fall not as yeah. bad but but it's seasonal yeah and until there's a vaccine it could come back again in november yeah and that's when these festivals are on so i wonder what's going to happen with that too nope, time will tell well listen time we are all out of time make sure everyone listening subscribes thanks for tuning in i'm brian always joined by my wife kathy thanks for listening again make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell we'll talk to you next time